you just need a calorie deficit, mate. While true, it's also one of the most reductive things you can tell someone who's trying to lose body fat. That said, understanding how to calculate one is useful. So let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're gonna to talk about what a calorie deficit is, why it's important for weight loss, and also why knowing how to calculate one isn't all that helpful on its own. Let's get started. Every single diet that has helped people to lose body fat in the history of humankind works on the exact same principle, by helping you eat fewer calories than you burn. This is what's known as a calorie deficit. So if you eat 2000 calories a day and your weight stays the same, that means you're burning 2000 calories too. That's calorie balance. On the other hand, if you eat only 1500 calories and you keep burning 2000 calories a day, that means you're in a 500 calorie deficit and will start losing weight. While you can technically increase how many calories you burn with exercise, this isn't effective long-term, as your body adjusts to the extra exercise by reducing how much it burns in other ways. Why that happens is a topic for another video. That means that the most effective way to get into a calorie deficit is to control the amount of food, and therefore calories, that you eat. And there are many different ways to do that. So, even if the diets seem very different, the principle is always the same. Keto diets work because fewer carbohydrates mean fewer calories. Vegan diets work because fewer animal products mean fewer calories. Low fat diets work because low fat means fewer calories. The principle is exactly the same. Restrict a food or food group to reduce calories and lose weight. But you're better than some restrictive diet because you're watching this video and now you know the principle of fat loss and don't have to try some stupid diet just to lose weight. You're welcome in advance. So how do you actually figure out how much to eat in order to lose body fat? I'm gonna talk about two methods today. Firstly, you can calculate your maintenance calories. That's how many calories you need to maintain your body weight. You do this by knowing your basal metabolic rate and multiplying it by an activity factor. For your basal metabolic rate or BMR, there are a lot of formulas available. And one that I really like to use is the Harris-Benedict equation, which looks a little like this. Just enter in your details for weight, age, and height, and it'll give you your BMR. Once you have that, you need to multiply it by an activity factor. This accounts for the added energy that you burn by being active. Typically, for someone who doesn't walk much and has a desk job, an activity factor of 1.1 or 1.2 is okay. If someone is moderately active, with exercise a few days a week and walks a little bit more, an activity factor of 1.3 to 1.6 might be okay. Or for someone with an active job like manual labor and a lot of exercise daily, an activity factor of 1.7 to even 2 plus could be useful. Activity factors are notoriously inaccurate, so don't worry about picking the right one. You'll need to adjust later anyway. So, once you pick an activity multiplier, multiply it by your BMR, and that will give you a rough idea of your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE. Alternatively, you can search for a calorie calculator online. Put your details in there and it'll calculate your calories for you. You can check out the My Protein Calorie Calculator by clicking on the link in the description below. Now, you may think that I haven't given a very detailed description of how to calculate calories. And the reason is, after working with hundreds of clients with different body composition goals, I know for a fact that calculating their energy expenditure with a formula just isn't that important. Here's the thing, you probably don't even need to use a calorie calculator because they're just estimations of what you should eat. The best way to calculate your calories is to actually monitor your body weight and track your calories and just reduce your calories a little until your weight starts to go down. That way is far better than any online calculator and helps you adjust your calories over time. Once you know how many calories you burn to maintain weight, if you want to lose weight, you need to eat fewer calories than that. Now, the only way you can eat less is by knowing how much you're eating at the moment. Now, again, you can do that in two ways. You can use a calorie or macro tracker, literally any of them is fine, and use that to eat fewer calories. Or you can just keep a rough food diary of what you eat daily and just reduce your portion sizes. The advantage of the calorie tracker is it gives you details on macronutrients like protein, carbs, and fats, which we'll talk about in a moment. You'll also need to measure your progress. And the easiest way to do that is by weighing yourself daily. Without monitoring your progress, you have no idea if what you're doing with your diet is working. There are plenty of other ways to measure your progress, taking measurements around your hips and waist or taking progress photos, but the scale is probably the easiest. I'm not saying it's the best, but it's the easiest. I say measure it daily because your scale weight can change a lot from day to day. 
So if you measure it daily and then get a weekly average, that's probably a much better measure of your progress. One thing to bear in mind when you're in a calorie deficit is that your weight loss will eventually slow down and stop. Even if you're still eating what was a calorie deficit for you before. This is totally normal and happens because when you lose weight, well, lighter bodies need less energy. And there's also some metabolic adaptation to dieting. This just means that your metabolism slows down a little to compensate for the reduced calories. The only thing you can do at this point is drop calories further to get back into a deficit again. It sucks, but that's just the way metabolism works. Now, I haven't said how much you should drop your calories by because that depends on how fast you want to lose weight. If you have a bigger calorie deficit, you'll lose weight faster. And while some people like that because it can help keep them motivated, personally, I think a slower rate of weight loss is a little bit better. It's easier to manage because you're not dropping your calories crazy low. For some people, a hard deficit or a big deficit is easy to get sick of, leading them to give up and end up robbing a bakery. Slower weight loss will help you maintain more muscle mass too. So depending on how fast you want to lose weight, you could consider a deficit of 200 to 500 calories. That means 200 to 500 calories below your total daily energy expenditure. Now, the principle of weight loss is very simple, but putting it all into practice is not easy at all, especially when we haven't even spoken about other factors like protein, fats, and carbs, or motivation for dieting, habit change, and just why losing weight is so hard. These are all really important topics and I've spoken about them before in previous videos, so please check those out. So, what do you think? Do you think you know how to work out a calorie deficit? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.